Hey everyone, how's it going? Today I'm going to be taking a look at the Apollo Twin USB Duo. Hey everyone, I've been wanting to make a video about the Apollo Twin USB Duo for a while now. I've had it for a few months and I really enjoy it. I've spent a lot of time with it and I want to demonstrate its capabilities, as well as give my thoughts and opinions on what they did well and where I think they need improvement. I'll also be going through and demonstrating what some of the plugins that come free with the unit sound like at the end of the video. My name's Taylor, and if this is your first time here, I do all sorts of stuff on this channel like gear reviews and tutorials, as well as posting my own original music. If you want to learn more about audio production or you just like seeing new gear, Subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so that you don't miss any of my videos. Alright, let's get started. So I bought this unit a few months back, essentially because I needed a monitor controller. I started looking at the different options for monitor controllers and they probably just kind of caught my eye. It's got a really sleek, cool design that takes a minimalist approach. It's got two ins and four outs, and it can receive eight additional inputs via ADAT. Where things get really interesting with the Apollo units is the internal DSP, which allows you to run real-time plugins with little or no latency and take some of the workload off the processor in your computer. The unit comes with a suite of free plugins that do a bunch of different things. The ones that were really appealing to me were the console emulation plugins. These emulate a variety of different famous consoles. There's two console emulation plugins that mine came with, the UA610B and the Neve 1073, and they sound killer. When you enable them, you actually can hear the Apollo clicking as it changes the impedance of the input to match the console that it's emulating. I feel like you just get this really unique sound when you use them. And when you track with them as a microphone preamp, it really makes whatever you're tracking sit in a different space in the mix. I really think all the folks over at Universal Audio have done a really terrific job with this unit. The only drawback is you are constantly reminded that there are a lot of plugins to buy. When you actually buy the unit, it comes with all of the plugins enabled and you have to go through and customize the ones that you want to be able to see in the list. So it can be really confusing and overwhelming at first because you just want to start playing with the plugins that came with the unit. And with that being said, the plugins are all $100 to $350 each. Sometimes they'll go on special for like 50% off or something like that, but they're really expensive plugins. I'm not saying that they're not worth the money, but it can be a little overwhelming as the unit's $899 US right now, and you spend all of that money on the unit, and then turn around and realize that you have to spend $100 to $350 a pop on each one of the plugins. You can spend a lot of money really quick with the Universal Audio line of products. And while they do make top tier awesome plugins, it is a little bit annoying that you're constantly reminded that there are all these plugins to buy. And not only that, but if you want to use the plugins in your DAW when you're mixing, you have all of the plugins listed in your list of UA plugins. So when you go to search for a plugin, all of the plugins come up, whether or not you have a license for them. The only way to get around this that I found in your DAW is to actually create a custom folder and move all the plugins that you have licenses for into that folder. That way you don't have to look through the whole list of available plugins when you're trying to find a plugin that you want to insert. So with all that being said, let me show you what it actually sounds like. Okay, so I have the Apollo mixing software opened up here, and I'm just going to go through and demonstrate some of this stuff and how you can use it when you're tracking and recording. So there's a few different things you can do. I'm not going to go through all the features of this, I just kind of want to demonstrate some of the plugins for you so you can see what they do and what they sound like. So one of the first things here, you see this area for your inserts. And here you can insert any of the plugins that you've purchased. I only have the plugins that came with you and I haven't actually purchased any individually yet. But um, yeah, you can insert all sorts of stuff. You can insert a Ampeg, or Fender Tweed, Marshall Plexi, blah, 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 Neve. You can insert the console preamp channels here, but if you do it up here in the unison, this is what enables the unit to actually change some of its settings and behave more like the consoles that it's emulating. So in here, I'm gonna go to preamp and channel strip, and I am going to add the Neve 1073. And check, 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 check. You can see right here, it's our this is what it's doing to the sound of my voice. And you can turn the gain up right here. This is a uh, tube gain. And then here's some EQ settings. This will make it a little bit brighter. Yep. And then you can go down here and you can see more EQ. This outer ring will actually adjust the frequency band. So you can change it to whatever frequency band you want to adjust. Let's say you want to add a lot of top end in there in the 7... 7.2k range or if you're looking for something more mid there it is um here's another one same thing here just lower frequencies if i want to add a lot of bass to my voice that's where i would do it and then this is a low cut right here nothing crazy it's just cool what it does so you can probably actually hear that listen That's the unit actually changing some of the internal components to match the console. Yeah. Okay. 
That is what it is. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. cool. Comes in handy. I really like using this on drums too. Um, something about the console, using the console settings on drums just really gives it an extra oomph. Whatever. Anyways, let's try something else, huh? Let's try the UA610B. And you can see what that sounds like. So here's your level. And when I add that, you can hear it clicking again. Pretty crazy. Two preamplifier. You can hear the gain from that and the saturation that's coming from the tubes. Uh, this one's a little bit easier to control. It's just a low high, a little bit more straightforward. You have your different bands that you want to control there. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Now let's hear what it sounds like on a guitar. <laughs> things I really love too is you can use the mouse wheel to control the knobs. I know I say that all the time, but it's kind of a big deal for me. So you get the idea of what it does. Now you can actually record just the dry input or you can actually print the effects to the track when you're recording it in your DAW. Over here on the right, there's a insert effects button. And if you switch that over to UAD record, it'll print the effects on the track that you're recording. You know, if you're one of those people who don't like to mess with things when you're mixing it and you just want to print the track. So that's pretty convenient. Anyways, that's it for the demonstration. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. I'll see you next time.